Hey everyone, and welcome to Winsnap Art's final countdown to Christmas video. This has been so much fun, and I figured what better to end it with than the ghost of Christmas future, because now we just get to look forward to Christmas next year. I hope you guys enjoy and keep watching to see how I did it. To start off, I'm using a white eyeliner pencil to mark out roughly where I want the cheek the jaw and the teeth to end up being. This is just a rough outline, it's not perfect, it's not beautiful, it's just so I can mark off where I want to have things so it's easier to paint on later. Once I have some of the bigger details marked out with the white, I'm going in with a brown eyeliner and marking where I want some of the finer details to be, like the teeth and the bones. I like using eyeliner pencils for this because it's easier to correct it if you make a mistake. I used a picture of an actual skull as a reference, but I'm not really paying too much attention to the anatomical details because I didn't really mind if it turned out to be a little exaggerated because I wanted this to seem a little messy and a little like a painting. I know this seems a little bit messy, but if your outline makes sense to you, that's what's really important. It's about getting your ideas out of your head and onto your face where you can visualize it a little bit better. Next, I'm going in with a black face paint and filling in all of the negative space. This being the area between the upper and lower jaw and the space between each tooth. With the teeth, I'm going in between each of them and forming a little Y shape. This will help give the teeth some dimension and it would show the natural indents that you have in your gums where your teeth are rooted in. Continue this same process onto the lower teeth. To form the tops of the teeth, I'm doing little M's I like to think of things like this in forms of letters because it helps me visualize it a little bit better, but you think of the tops of your teeth have these little bumps in them and that'll make them seem more realistic instead of just being little squares. Next I'm taking white face paint and filling in the gaps in between each black space. I'm also using the white to overlap over the black a little bit because it'll mix and make a gray and give it some natural shading that we won't have to go back and add in later. On the top of the back teeth, I'm starting by drawing two dots and pulling a line directly down from those. This will give more of that top of that molar texture. I'm also doing this on the top using the same idea and you're really just repeating the same process except upside down. Remember, these teeth do not have to be perfect. By giving each tooth its own unique shape, it'll further the creepiness effect of this look. I'm filling in this little jawbone shape here, but I'm not going to bring it completely down. I didn't want to paint my whole face white, I wanted to leave my natural skin showing through, so I'm only going to pull that color down as far as that little piece goes. Now I'm going in between each tooth with a pointed smudgy brush and with a red shadow. I'm going to start by pulling that down from in between each tooth to give it just a little bit more dimension. I'm repeating the same process on the upper jaw, putting the smudgy brush in between each tooth and pulling straight up. I want the majority of that color to go in between each tooth and to get lighter as it pulls away. Next going in with a slightly darker red, I'm going right in between these teeth. I'm not going to pull this color up as far, I just want that shadow to be right in between the teeth. I'm also taking this red and smudging it just above that jawline. I didn't really care if it was too messy or not because I'm going to add some shading there with a fluffy brush. I'm using that to blend it out and curve it to the shape that I want it to be. 
I'm adding more shadow where I need it to be, starting with that darker red, and then I'm going in with a black and smudging it right along where we have that face paint, so it'll give a nice gradient upwards. To help that red transition to my skin a little bit better, I'm going in with a mustard color and shading just right on the edge. Next, I wanna repeat this shading onto the lower jaw, pulling down from that white jawbone. I want it to be the darkest, the closest to the white, which seems a little counterintuitive, but it ended up looking cool. And when you're done, it should look something like this. Next, going in for some shading on the temples. I wanted my temples to look really sunken in like they would on a skull or on someone who is just skin and bones. So I'm starting off with that lightest red, gradually building it up darker, the closest to the edge on my forehead. I want more of a crisp line on that side and a blend closer to my hairline. Next I'm going in with black just slightly and I'm pinching the end of that fluffy brush to give me more of a flat surface. Keep blending until you're satisfied with how it looks. Next I'm going in with some illuminator on my real cheekbones, the center of my forehead and down my nose. Taking a gray shadow, I'm pulling that through the front of my brows and down onto my nose contours. I am making my crooked nose seem a little bit straighter, and I'm also making sure to blend that out really well. I don't want a sharp line on this. Next, taking a black eyeliner, I'm putting that on the inner and outer corners of my eye, and I'm filling in the inside with NYX's Jumbo Eye Pencil and Cottage Cheese. I'm blending that out with my finger, and then patting a silver metallic shadow in the middle and a more gray metallic shadow on the outsides. What we're going for is called a halo eye, and it'll make your eye seem really round and open, but you want it dark on the inner and outer corner and lightest in the middle above where your pupil is. I'm also pulling that darker color down onto my lower lid and highlighting in the inner corner. Continue to build up those inner and outer corners until it's as dark as you would like it to be. Next, I'm going in with a sort of bronzy nude shadow over the top of that, and then I'm blending that out with the same silver. Curl your lashes and apply a couple coats of your favorite mascara, and then that is it for your eyeshadow. I filled in my brows with a black face paint, and now I'm pulling some silver shadow through the front of them. Once you've done that, your look is complete. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this whole series and watching my videos. I can't wait to see what next year holds for Winsnap Arts. Um, again, thank you so much and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!